Okay, this is going out to uh, to Abigail and uh, and her, uh, her her daughter Ellie and her son Kevin. Uh, thanks so much for reaching out to the club. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we, especially young fans, young people getting involved in gardening, that really kind of gets us excited as well. So, um, uh, your 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 email's not kind of kind of inspired me with young gardeners getting involved. Um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different, a little bit special for the uh, for the Water Garden Club. Uh, some special content, especially for uh, especially for Ellie and Kevin, two young people getting involved in gardening. Um, that's that's always really great to see, and it gets us recharged. Now, here at the Ontario Water Garden Society, our motto is "No gardens complete without water." Now, you know you need water to water your plant because without water, your plants won't grow. But uh, but did you know that it's nice to have a water feature in your garden as well? Water feature is basically something with water in it, um, uh, and because it's nice because it gives you the sound of, uh, of, of, of running water in your garden, so it's a nice, soothing, relaxing sound. But uh, I bet you didn't know, all those bugs that come in, the bees, the butterflies and everything that come in to, uh, to pollinate all your plants, so you've got lots of nice flowers or vegetables, whatever it is that you're growing, they actually need to drink, especially when we get really, really hot days like, uh, like we are today in Toronto. Um, they need a place to go get a drink, so if you've got a water feature in your garden where those insects can go get a quick drink, while they're pollinating your plants. When they get hot, they can go get a quick drink and get back to pollinating your plants in your garden. So you'll have lots of flowers and veggies and stuff like that. And they won't have to fly down the street or heaven forbid they gotta go to Timmy's or McDonald's. So it's nice to have a water feature in your garden, even for that particular. I wanna do something quick and easy. We often get tied up with big water gardens and ponds and fish and chemical feeding and pumps and filters and stuff like that. I wanna do something real simple that uh, the UK could do in your garden as beginner gardeners, um, very inexpensively, very quickly, very simply, very easy to maintain. So, to have a water feature in our backyard, not a pond, but we're just going to be close, to have a water feature in our backyard, first thing we need is something to hold water. So, I've got this pot here, it's a big old plastic pot, it was originally intended to have like a house plant stuck in it, so it was kind of decorative. There's no hole, drainage hole in the bottom, so it's not like a flower pot, um, so this will hold water. If you can't find anything that doesn't have a hole in the bottom, you can always you can always plug the hole so that it will hold water. Um, uh, a big old wine cork, if there happen to be any of those laying around the house, is a good start. Some silicone sealer, um, whatever it is you can do to, to plug the hole so to make the vessel watertight. But uh, uh, a big old pot does the trick. You can use anything else. You can use a pail. Um, I'll do some things at the very end of this video to show you some ideas that I've done here in my garden to use things that aren't really intended to be water features these end with water features. So I started with this pot. That's gonna hold water, that's gonna be our water pump, our water, our water feature. Now I went to Canadian Tire or sorry, Home Depot and for about 30, 35 bucks I bought this. This is a water pump, this is a pump. Uh, it is a uh, uh, 100 gallon per minute pump, doesn't matter how much, but it's basically it's a small pump. Um, I bought this one in particular because it has some extra hardware that I'm going to need to make this real simple for, for you guys to have a water feature in your backyard. Um, I could probably buy a pump a little bit cheaper. Um, I can get little little tiny pumps like this that would kind of do the job, but it's basically a little pump with a hole in the top and now i got to figure out how to get a piece of tubing or, 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 or a pipe or, or something like that inside there to do what I want to. Once you see what we're going to do, you'll understand what I mean. So. You can get pumps a little bit cheaper, but then it's up to you to try and figure out all the plumbing and the accessories and everything else. So we're not going to use this one today. We're going to use this one. So let's crack this bad boy open. Yes, for the sake of time, I already cut my way into this ridiculous packaging. And we don't need that. We're going to need these. We're going to need this. And we're, of course, going to need this. This is the pump. That's all there is to it. There's a cord to plug it in, and if it has to be cleaned, this little cover comes off. There's some filter foam in there that you clean out, and inside here, there's another little cover that comes off, and I'm not sure how that works on this pump, but there's another little cover that comes off, and there's a little impeller in here, and if the pump starts stops pumping because it gets all plugged up, you just open up like this, clean all this stuff out, and then put it back together the way it came apart. Another trick I use to clean pumps to do the, to do the, the quick way is um, 
you basically flush water backwards through it and it pushes all the crud out and it unclogs, and unclogs it so it runs. But if you do your water feature properly, you probably won't have that problem. Now, the reason why I bought this pump is it comes with all these extra stuff. This here is a little valve and uh, this is what allows me to, uh, to control uh, the water coming out of the pump. So this snaps into the top of the pump. And now when the pump is running, the water is going to come out here. It's going to go in through these slots, through that little filter foam stuff, and it's going to come out here. And I can control with this little valve, I control how much water comes out. So I can kind of turn it up and turn it down. The other thing I want is this thing here. This is a riser tube. And it, uh, it plugs in the top here. And it goes up, and it goes down, so I can get it to the right height that I want. But it also comes with this other stuff, and these things are, this, this is like a little spray head, plugs on the top, and it's kind of like the shower head in your bathtub, except it's going up, sort of coming down, so it sprays water out, really neat patterns. And I've got this other one that I can put on. And this has this other feature that's like an umbrella. Or I can change that for a different type of kind of umbrella feature um, and use that instead. We're going to use a little spray thing, I think, because that's kind of cool. Uh, or you could use this without anything on it and just use it as what we often refer to as a foamer, which is just basically shoots a stream of water out and it bubbles and foams. And and add on the surface of the water, keep the water moving. The whole idea is keep water circulating and so that you have the sound of water. That's why we put a pump in there. So there we go. Now, this pump, even with this riser tube all the way up, we want the water spraying to be above the surfaces of, of the water. So with that at the bottom of the pump, it's 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 barely there. So what I'm gonna do, and also to give it a bit more stability is I got a landscape break. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to use some of this garden twist tie stuff. This is just, you know, regular twist tie like you use for garbage cans. And I'm going to put the pump on there. And I'm going to tie it up with a twist tie. These pumps, because they're very small, um, they don't weigh an awful lot. Um, sometimes they can fall over in the pond, they don't stay standing up and it becomes a bit of a pain in, pain in the neck. So I tie it down to that brick like that so that it won't fall over inside the pond. Um, and we're gonna do that. So then we take that, flip that back over, drop that inside the pond, and, uh, and there we go. Uh, we're almost ready to go, but we need something else. So we've got the pump in our pot, and I'm going to get the cord out of here. And, uh, we're going to bring the cord out the back so that it, you don't see too much of it. And um, hmm. Oh yeah, we need water. I just happen to have a garden hose here. So we need to fill this up with some water. Hmm. Maybe I better go turn it on. better. You don't really want me to want to watch me fill a whole pot with water, do you? There we go. Now we're full of water. The only thing left to do is plug in the pump. First, I want to lower this down because this riser is a little bit taller than I thought it was going to be. And we're going to put on our little spray head. And I'm going to close that. Better take off the watch first. Don't want to sink that in the pond. So I'm going to turn off that little valve down there. I showed you that besides how much water comes out. 
Now we're going to plug in our pump. And our pump is running. And not much is coming out. So what I want to do is... There we go. Got a nice little spray of water. I could take this off if I wanted to. Just kind of have... I'm going to tighten up that twist tie. Rock it around a little bit. There we have what we sometimes refer to as a bubbler. Nice little spray of water. I think what I'm going to do, just, this, is, this pot's not quite as deep as I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to I'm going to unplug that pump so I don't hose myself down. I've done that before. You kids like that. I don't think I'm going to put it on top of this block. I think I'm going to kind of tie it to the side of the block. I'll do this down here. On the side of the block. So I can get that little cap, that little valve thing. This pot isn't quite as deep as I thought it was. This way I can still get lots of water. I can still get up my valve. And that will still help to support that pump so it doesn't want to fall over inside there. And now I can plug it back in and open up that valve. And I'm going to raise up that riser pipe so it's just below the surface. So I've got a nice little bubbly pot. I've got the sound of running water in my pot, in my backyard, in my garden, and all the bugs have a place to come get a drink. So they can stay hydrated. And there you go. There's a real quick and simple basic water feature. Now, if you want to, if you want to go a little bit further, um, I often go. To, if you're in the Toronto area, I often go to Humber Nurseries because they've kind of got everything. And uh, my wife Karen loves shopping for plants there because they've got so much. So they actually have a whole greenhouse dedicated to just water garden plants. So what you may want to do is um, go to a local garden center, one that has uh, plants for water gardens or for ponds pond plants or water garden plants and uh, pick up a few things. So let me show you what I mean. Let me go get something. This is a plant called water hyacinth. Um, you can get up them for like three, four dollars for a bunch. Um, these are little baby ones that I picked off of our main plants that are in our big pond. Um, so you pick up two or three of these and you just drop them in the water. And they float on the surface and the bugs can land on the leaves of this plant and actually walk down the walk down the leaves and get to the surface of the water so they can get a drink. So they really like them because they can land, it gets them right close to the water so they can get in there and they can get a drink. They don't have to try and land on the surface. Um, these water hyacinths also help to uh, um, also help to cover the surface of the water. You want to keep the surface of your water feature at least half, maybe a little bit more, uh, at least half covered with plants because that keeps the sun from getting into the water. And uh, and that keeps that keeps algae from growing, so you won't have to you won't have to worry about cleaning your pond as much. So uh, water hyacinth is a really really good beginner plant. They they grow well. Uh, they'll they'll over the summer they'll they'll grow and expand and they'll they'll fill up your pond. The other plant I like to use is let me go get some of that. It's this here. This is a plant. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see. This is the reddish stuff and there's green stuff. There's two different plants here. This is this is a plant um, of uh, uh, duckweed and um, and fairy moss. The reddish brownish stuff is fairy moss, and the little green stuff is a plant called duckweed. They're little teeny tiny plants. They float on the surface, and you just drop them into your pond. And they're also very prolific. They'll grow and expand and multiply, and Next thing you know, with, with some of that in there, along with the water hyacinth, the surface of your pond is going to be covered in uh, covered in plants, so you won't have to worry about algae. 
and the bugs will be able to get in to get a drink and uh, and uh, you'll be off to the races. So let's see what else we can do here with this with this pump thing. You've got yourself a nice little water feature for your for your back garden. You've got a place for the bugs to come get a drink. You got the sound of water in your backyard. All's good. And you'll have the best garden in the neighborhood too. Thanks for watching, guys. Ellie, Kevin, keep it up. Love to have new gardeners. Thanks for watching. So this was a preformed pond kit that we picked up that we have on the patio. It's made of fiberglass. It's it's all one kit. It's an entire fiberglass thing. It includes the pumps. Pump inside. It's got LED lights uh, so that it lights up at night. Um, it was $200, $225, something like that from Home Depot. Uh, it's on the corner of our patio. It helps keep a little access panel closed so the windows can blow it open. And it gives us a little bit of extra light and, uh, and sound of water on our patio. So there's our, there's our preformed pump. Now this is an interesting one. This is actually an old chamber pot. If you don't know what a chamber pot is, ask your mom to explain it to you. She may know. She can find out. But it's an old, old chamber pot that I find in my mo in, that I found in my mother's house uh, when I was clearing it out. And uh, the pollinators love this because it's small. It's their size. They can get right down into the leaves and uh, and get a drink and uh, and fly off and go back to pollinating plants. So uh, they love this little one in the back garden. And in fact, I have inside this one. I have a little what they call a peanut light, a little peanut light. So that's down inside there. And that makes it light up at night so it glows. Really kind of cool. Now this isn't really a water feature, but again it's water that's in our backyard. Uh, these are just a couple of big trays that uh, they're just cheap, inexpensive plastic trays that we got from the garden center to put pots in. Uh, they're about uh, a couple inches deep and uh, I don't know, maybe a foot in diameter. Uh, the birds love these. Uh, robins are incredibly fastidious. Uh, just like you guys, they have a bath every night before they go to bed. Uh, lots of other birds too. But uh, late in the evening, around sundown, when all the birds are getting ready to go to bed for the night, uh, we'll have one after another robins coming in here for their, for their bath. To, uh, to have a bath and get all cleaned up and get ready for the night and preen and clean their feathers and, and, and that. So it's really neat. We get, uh, we get robins and cardinals and starlings and sparrows and finches and all kinds of birds coming in here for a bath. So, uh, so these are pretty popular with the birds. This is a small square one we have in our front garden. It's about a foot and a half square and about uh, about six eight inches deep. Um, the pump in that is more just to keep the water circulation circulating, so we don't get mosquitoes in there. Um, it's more like a bog really than a pond. It's got lots of water loving plants that uh, lots of like like marsh plants that like to have their feet wet. Um, such as uh, canna lilies and all kinds of stuff like that. Then, of course, there's some hyacinth and uh, and uh, fairy uh, fairy moss and duckweed in there as well to keep the surface covered. Um, again, the bugs like that one too. They like to come in here for a drink. So, it's just kind of a marshy plant, uh, marshy marshy water feature that we have up in the front uh, near our, near the front of our house. Now, this is probably one of my favorites. This is actually an old bathroom sink from the cottage that we. Uh, when we replaced the vanity, we took that sink out and I really felt bad about throwing it in the garbage, so I turned it into a water feature. There's actually a little reservoir of water down underneath all the rocks that you see at the bottom. Uh, and it's about uh, three feet diameter and about two or three feet deep. And that's where the pump and everything is. And the pump basically pushes water up through the tap and it drains out the overflow of the sink uh, and goes back down to the reservoir underneath. And of course the rocks are around to hide the reservoir so you don't see it. So it's just like it looks like a continuously running sink in the front yard, front garden. Um, the, I also have a light in that, so it uh, lights up and glows at night. The bluish tint you see in the water is a product called pond blue. Uh, some water gardeners will use that in their water in their ponds to uh, to tint the water dark, so that if they do have koi fish, the uh, the animals that will want to uh, prey on those fish can't see them because the water is too dark. And I'm using it here because I don't have plants to cover the surface. 
so that helps keep the water dark enough that uh, that I don't get too much in the way of algae buildup and it stays fairly clean so I don't have to clean on a regular basis. But again, like I said, it doesn't always have to be a, a, a preformed pond or something that you should think should be a water garden. It could be almost anything. And in this case, it's no bathroom sink. Pretty cool. This here is actually what we refer to as the big pond. Um, it's not that big. Uh, we, have, we actually live in a townhouse, so we actually have pretty small yards. Um, this one's about three feet long by about a foot and a half, maybe two feet wide. Uh, it's about a foot and a half, two feet deep. We got water lilies in there, a bunch of other plants. Um, the pump I have in here is a bit bigger. It actually has two outlets. One goes to the foaming head that you see in the middle by the uh, hyacinth and the water lilies. And the other one goes to a piece of tubing that goes up into the back of that old leaky watering can and comes out the spout. So it kind of looks like the watering can is constantly non-stop pouring water in the pond. Um, just something else for appearance. Uh, so that's all our water gardens. Thanks for watching.